Good morning, everybody. Just doing my last minute preparation there. Sorry about that. Getting organized. I hope everybody's doing well on this beautiful Friday. Um, we are finishing up 11.4 today. We'll go through 11.5 as well. I don't know if we'll get all the way through 11.5, but we'll start into 11.5 today. Um, but I'll see anything else that I need to remind you of. Um, that I know of. Uh, let me just look on our website really quickly to see if there's anything that's coming up that might be worthwhile to mention. Nope, nothing really major. Um, in probably one, two, three weeks, we'll prob there's probably going to be an integration B. Uh, that's actually today's department meeting and for the mathematics department, we're figuring out kind of the timing on that. Um, so if uh, that does happen, then I'm going to just put out a few timed assignment, optional assignments, ungraded. You don't have to worry about it. But they're timed. It's just a bunch of uh, integrals to see how many you can do in a short period of time. Um, if you're interested, totally optional. You don't have to do it. Um, so anyhow, uh, anything else I need to mention? Probably not. Um, yeah. Just to remind you of where we were last time, we had been talking about the uh, comparison test. We had the series comparison test, this guy right here, um, which just tells us that if you're trying to showcase that a, a series converges or diverges, you can compare that with, as long as the sequence that your series is based upon, as long as that sequence is not negative, basically positive, then you can compare that series to another series where the sequence of that that series is based upon is also positive and there's some type of order established between the sequences so for example the sequence let's say your base series uh, is the series of a sub n then if you compare it to a series of another sequence b sub n and that series of B sub n converges, it forces A sub n to converge. If on the other hand, let's say you were starting with the series of B sub n and you decided, well, I don't know what that series, if that series converges or diverges, let me compare that to this series A sub n. If the series of A sub n diverges, it pushes the series of B sub n to diverge as well. So that's the series comparison test. To be honest with you, it's, uh, it's very much like the um, comparison test, the integral comparison test for improper integrals. Um, but the hard part about the series comparison test, it's not impossible, it's just a challenge every once in a while, is to establish that order. And if it's really challenging to establish the order, then we have a second comparison test, which I'm trying to get to, but for some reason it's just not loading. There we go. And the second comparison test is called the limit comparison test. And this is actually, uh, as I mentioned last class, one of my favorite um, one of my favorite tests for testing whether a series converges or diverges. The only thing that you that you require to use the limit comparison test is that the sequences that your series are based upon are both positive eventually. And so when you have that established, you can then compare the series, or maybe I should say compare the sequence that your series given series is uh, based upon to a different sequence where you know whether or not that new, newly created sequence, its sum or its series converges or diverges. So if you are able to create a new sequence based slightly upon your old sequence and you were to take the limit of that ratio if that limit of that ratio as n goes to infinity ends up being finite and positive but it it should be positive anyway because uh remember your sequences that you're comparing are supposed to be positive so but as long as it's finite then and non-zero then uh we can say those sequences or the series converge or diverge together. And so that's what we dealt with last time. They're very nice tests. There's not much else I need to say about them. We've actually done every example we could with those tests. 
But for now, we're going to finish out this section with a remainder estimate. So just like we did with the integral comparison test, remember the integral comparison test, um, if you only add up the first, let's just say, um, n terms uh, for the integral test, uh, let me do it this way, the integral test, the error, the remainder, is less than or equal to the integral from n to infinity of the function that you are comparing to. So that's for the integral test. If, if you use the integral test to showcase that your series converges, then if you only want to add up the first 10 terms, the error of only adding the first 10 terms, in other words, uh, what you didn't add, is bounded by the integral from n, in our case, with my example I was just stating, from 10 to infinity of the function you're comparing to. Well, that's for the integral test. There's something very, very similar for the um, error estimate. The author calls it a remainder estimate. In reality, um, most of us uh, would call it an error estimate. So the error estimate, if you end up using a comparison test, is very, very similar. It's just that the integral itself doesn't start at n, it starts at n plus one. So a slight difference in uh, how uh, the setup is, just a very small difference. Um, and otherwise it's it's pretty much uh, the same. So not a massive, massive deal. And it is probably, um, actually I would, I think that n plus one is incorrect. I think it's supposed to be n. I'm actually, when I looked at that, I thought that's not quite right. So I'm just looking it up. No, it's supposed to be an n. I don't know why I have it written as an n plus one. So let me uh, erase that n plus one. It's supposed to be an n. There we go. It's basically the same exact estimate. There you go. Okay. So if that's the case, then what we can do is uh, notice that the language here says the following. Suppose we use the, uh, the convergent series B sub n, right there, to show that the series A sub n is convergent using some type of comparison test. Okay, so this assumes that you've used either the limit comparison test or the series comparison test. But what's beautiful about this is that the remainder estimate or the error estimate is exactly the same as the integral test. That's why I was slightly confused with my n plus one. I must have mistyped that. Anyhow, um, so the remainder, the nth remainder is going to be uh, the summation of n plus one to infinity because that's, it's basically what you didn't add. You added up the first n terms. What didn't you add? Well, the n plus first, the n plus second, the n plus third, and so on and so forth. So that's our remainder as we've defined in the past. And what we're going to do is let T sub n be the summation from n to infinity of B sub i. T sub n is basically uh, the remainder uh, for the, um, uh, what you going to call it, for the compared series. So let's go ahead and just make the statement, our error that we would compute if we only had, let's say, the first 10 terms is going to be less than the error had we added up the first n minus one terms. That's what this is actually saying here, is that it's the first n minus one terms. There, so that's that's why uh, my integral here starts at n. That makes sense to me now. So, it's a very very nice way to do this because, generally speaking, when you do a comparison test, you're comparing it to a geometric series. Not always, but often is the case. So the integral is only necessary if you cannot compute t sub n explicitly. And I'm going to showcase this actually using both an integral and a non-integral so that you can see how it works. So we'll see this in a very concrete example. I think the error estimates are often somewhat confusing for students. So it's very nice to see a very complete example. So let's go ahead and do that now. The main thing you have to remember is that the error estimate, both for the integral test and for the comparison test, are sort of the same. 
It's just the integral from n to infinity of, well, if you were using an integral test, you're comparing your series to a function where the function at n is the same thing as your sequence at n. But when you use a comparison test, well, you're not comparing, or I'm sorry, you're not using your given sequence, you're using a completely different sequence. This is the new series. And this B sub N right there is the new sequence. And we need to integrate a function that's based upon the new sequence. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to call that G of X DX, where G of N is equal to B sub N. Essentially, whatever you use to showcase convergence, you're going to integrate that related function. There we go. Okay. So let's see it in action. Um, let me get this going here. I just have a little sub note on the side. I'm looking at the wrong section here. There we go. All right. So let's use the first 15 terms to estimate the value of this given series. Now that series actually is very difficult to determine its exact value. In fact, it's impossible to determine its exact value using methods, actually using any method. However, we can estimate its exact value just by adding up the first 15 terms. So let's go ahead and say the summation, I'm getting close here, from i equals one to infinity of that sequence, which is two to the ith power over four to the ith power plus one, we're gonna approximate that using the sum of the first 15 terms. And so that is, by definition, the summation i equals one to 15 of two to the ith power over four to the ith power plus one. To do that, honestly, I, I highly recommend using uh, Desmos just because you can add up quite a, uh, very quickly on Desmos. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my desktop screen. Let me get that going over here. Let's share my desktop screen so that we can uh, do that summation. Where's my desktop screen? There we are. And in Desmos, you can either use a graphing calculator or a scientific. However, if you try to use a scientific calculator, I think I mentioned this before, but if you type the word SUM in here, oh, it actually does do it. So I will do that. There you go. So I didn't think it would do it, but it does. So great. Um, I'm going to sum up SUM from one to 15. And our summation is a fraction where the numerator is two to the, we you were using I, but you can see the index on this is N. So I'll say two to the N over four, raise the N and then plus one. And it is yelling at me. I don't know why it's doing that. Is there a specific reason? Let me see. Uh, let me do this. Yeah, for some reason, it is totally not. What do you want to take the sum of? Well, I'd like, let me try this again. Maybe it's just not SUM, one to 15. And what if I put a parentheses here? I'm just going to see what happens. Yeah, so interesting. It's not doing it there. So I will then hop back and do it via the graphing calculator because I know it works in the graphing calculator. Not 100% sure what was going on there. But in the graphing calculator, at least, I know it will work. I'll just do the sum. N equals 1 to 15 of a fraction where the numerator is 2 to the nth. The denominator is 4 to the nth plus 1. See, notice it's already computing that. Uh, plus 1 downstairs. So we get an approximation. It's approximately, I'm just writing this on my laptop here, 0 0.883. 06, 248, I'll just leave it like 248598759, Now, obviously, uh, maybe it's not so obvious, but that is a pretty decent approximation because we added up the first 15 terms. So that's okay. But 
is it exact? Like, is that the exact value of the summation of the entire series? No, totally not. It's only the sum of the first 15 terms. So let's go ahead. I'm trying to get back to my laptop here. Share my screen on my laptop. There we go. And we're gonna estimate how bad is our approximation? Basically, what is our error? So whenever you're working on these and somebody says, I need to figure out the error, you just have to refer to your error estimate formulas. And generally speaking, they're all kind of um, based around the integral from n to infinity. Um, however, in this case, um, it is kind of nice because we can go ahead and uh, use a comparison test first to show that this converges. And then since we used a comparison test to show that this converges, we can then use the error estimate for the comparison test. So let me write that down. It's kind of critical that I do that. So to use the error estimate for um, do, 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 comparison test, we must first show this series converges by a comparison test. It actually doesn't matter which that you use, just whether you series comparison test or the limit comparison test, it actually does not matter. Just choose one and try to prove that this series will converge by one of those tests. Right now I'm gonna see if I can use the series comparison test on this one or actually on this one. <laughs> Sorry, I was not looking at the infinite series. So let's go ahead and try to build a sequence to compare to this given sequence right here. And let's see if we could do that. Uh, let's go ahead and just say that four to the ith power plus one. Well, that's definitely greater than four to the ith power. Take the reciprocal of both sides. So that one over four to the ith plus one is now less than one over four to the ith. And if you multiply both sides by two to the ith power, you get this. And by the way, that is two fourths to the ith power, or in other words, one half to the ith power. Now think about adding that up. That is geometric, okay? I'll just say, and we know, and we know that the series I equals one to infinity of one half to the ith power is a convergent geometric series. because it's common ratio is less than one in magnitude. Now that I've proven, because that is the proof that um, our original series right here, we've now proven that that series converges because a series of terms that are greater than this will converge. So maybe I should just say that this implies the series of the terms that are uh, less than those terms. So I equals one to infinity of two to the ith over four to the ith plus one, which by the way is less than the series I equals one to infinity of one half to the i converges by the series comparison test. Once you've shown that your given series converges by a comparison test, if you're asked to to um, for the error, like where you're being asked here, what if we only added up the first 15 terms, what the error? You now have two options. You can either hop back a page and show you, hop back a page and show you, there we go. You can either say the error of your summation, the first, some of the first 15 terms, um, either the error on that is bounded by the error had you 
added up the first n minus one terms. This is kind of a weird uh, notation here. And I'm not 100% sure if the author actually uses that notation or uh, if he doesn't. It seems like he doesn't, but I'm going to just double check uh, because it seems kind of odd. It seems like it should be an n plus one there. T sub n, yeah, it should be n plus one. Yeah, it should be n plus one. Gosh, my my uh, uh, my notation here is just terrible today. This should be an n plus one. All right. So my plus ones were in the wrong spot. I had a plus one there. It should have been actually there. Sorry about that. All right. So that being said, uh, it, that way it makes sense, right? If you add up the first n terms of your related series that you're comparing to, then the remainder on that is actually the sum of n plus one and n plus two and the n plus third and the n plus fourth term and so on and so forth. So that way it works with all of our previous notations. I'll have to update my notes to reflect that. So anyhow, um, we have two choices. Either sum up from n plus one to infinity our compared sequence, or yeah, our compared sequence, or integrate the function that's related to the compared sequence. So let me showcase what I mean by that. The error for adding up the first 15 terms is defined to be, just to get this completely solid for you guys, the sum starting at the 16th term and going to infinity of two to the ith over four to the ith plus one. That is the error. That's what we have not added up for our original series. But I don't want to sit here and add up that because that's very hard to do. However, our error estimate theorem tells us this is going to be less than or equal to T sub 15. And T sub 15 is going to be, it's defined to be, the summation, same thing, from I equals 16 to infinity, because you added up the first 15 terms of your compared series. And so you still have the 16th term up to the infinite term that you've left off. And that is going to be, your compared series in this case is one half to the ith power. And what's nice about using this when you have a geometric series is that we have a way to find out exactly what this value is. This is geometric. Let me point an arrow and just say it's geometric. So if I can start with this power being zero, right there, start at zeroth power. If I can do that, then I know what that summation will be identically. To start that at the zeroth power, I'm gonna factor out 16, whoops, 16 powers of one half out of this summation. If I do that, you get one half to the I minus 16. And notice when I starts at 16, that's the zeroth power. I'm actually starting at the zeroth power now. And that's why I think that this is the great, a great way to approximate your error for only adding up the first 15 terms of your original series. So uh, with geometric series is super nice. It's a really great reinforcement of your geometric series uh, theorems, right? So let's go ahead and finish this out. This is going to be one to the 16th over two to the 16th times. And then we know this will turn into, because we know that's a geometric series and that geometric series will converge. It converges to one over one minus one half. Now distribute that two to the 16th into that denominator. And that'll be one over two to the 16th minus two to the 15th. Oops, let's go to two to the 15th. 
And that is just a super small number. I mean, I would probably grab a calculator for that. So in fact, I'll go ahead and off to the side really quickly, just figure out what that is. One over two to the 16th minus, oh good, two to the 15th. So this is approximately 0 0.000003. 0, 0.5. I'll just do it that way. That was supposed to be a five. So I know the error of adding up the first 15 terms there. Remember, we added up the first 15 terms and we found out the sum of the first 15 terms of our original series is 0 0.88306 and a bunch of other stuff, right? And you want to know how bad is that estimate to the true sum of the full series? And we know now that that is off possibly by a maximum error. It's not that it's exactly off, but it's the maximum error that will be off by is 0 0.00005, or in other words, what is that? 1,000, 10,000, 300 thousandths. That's really a small error. Why did I not simplify to two? Uh, why didn't I simplify? So it's being asked, why didn't I simplify this right here? to be the number two. The only reason why I didn't do that is because uh, I have a habit of taking this and distributing it into the denominator. So it's two to the 16th minus two to the 15th. That's all, not a big deal. You could distribute, you can make that a two. It, it, it becomes the same thing, no matter what. So I just, I have, you have to grab a calculator no matter what, unless you happen to know what one over two to the 15th is, uh, but most people don't. So. Yeah, I just did it this way. Yeah, it's a good question though. It is a good question. So you could technically do this problem right here as one over two to the 16th times two, basically. And that would be one over two to the 15th, which is exactly what this is actually. Uh, but I just didn't do it that way. Just the way that I do my mathematics. Um, okay, so that's if you have a very special case where you compared your given series to a geometric series. But what if you didn't compare it to a geometric series? What if you compared it to something else that wasn't geometric? Are you lost? Do you, can you not find the error? No, you can. It's just that if, I'll write this down below. Um, I don't want to use red, I'll use green. If it's the case that you cannot compute uh, T sub 15 explicitly. And by the way, most of the time you cannot because you're, you're not comparing to a geometric series. It's great if you can compare it to a geometric series because then you can find the value of that series. But if you can't compute or compare to um, a geometric series, so you can't compute that tail of the geometric series explicitly, then use the fact that the remainder r sub n is also bounded by the integral from n to infinity of b sub n. Uh, well, actually it would be of g of x dx. So for example, in this case, the remainder had we only added up the first 15 terms, which is exactly what we did is going to be bounded by the integral from 15 to infinity of, what do we have? One, one half to the uh, ith. So it's gonna be one over two to the x dx. Now, when you do this, you're gonna get a slightly different value because um, what you're getting is just a, a ceiling, an upper bound on your error. It's not going to give you an exact value because your error is not going to actually get up to that large size. It's just going to give you a worst case scenario. Like in the worst case, your error could be this large. So you could, you could totally integrate this. This is remember the integral from 15 to infinity of two to the negative X DX. You would use limits. This is the limit as T runs off to infinity of the antiderivative of two to the negative X, which is two to the negative x times a negative divided by a natural log of two evaluated from 15 to t. 
So the antiderivative of two to the negative X is negative two to the negative X divided by the natural log of two, which is not something that a lot of people remember, to be honest with you. Um, and then go ahead and evaluate this. That's the limit as T goes to infinity of uh, negative two to the negative T over natural log of T, two, sorry, uh, plus two to the negative 15th over natural log of two. And that's actually one over two to the 15th times the natural log of two. So this is one over two to the 15th natural log of two. So this is slightly smaller, actually. This tells us that our error is actually slightly smaller than this because this is one over two to the 15th right here. So this even tightens up our error even more if we wanted to use this approximation, okay? So it's just a heads up. All right. So anyhow, kind of a nice uh, process here. You can totally use. All right, remainder estimates so far really kind of boil down to this very same formula right here, both times, okay? Now what we're gonna do is move into the first style of test where you have um, series that don't involve only positive terms. So, so far we've just, can I go down the G sub N part? Oh yeah, let's go over here. There we go. There you go. Um, so uh, we, uh, if you think about all the series, except for geometric series, if you think about all the non-geometric series we've dealt with so far, all the non-geometric series um, involve only positive terms or eventually positive terms. But what if we're handed a series that does not have only positive terms and it never is eventually only positive? In other words, what if there's some pattern where it's popping be between negative and positive uh, terms in our series? How will we determine convergence or divergence of that type of series? And that gets to a very fun and easy test, probably the easiest test of all other than the divergence test. Um, which is called the alternating series test. Before we get there, I just want to remind you of all of the tests so far, like I have been doing, because I think it's a good thing to see this. So here's our test so far. Given a series, if you want to test for convergence or divergence, well, if you think it's divergent, here are all our ways to test for divergence so far. The knee-jerk reaction, the one you should always go for first is the divergence test. Always try that. Uh, if that doesn't work, check to see if it's geometric because if it is and the common ratio is greater than one, greater than or equal to one, then you know that geometric series will diverge. If that doesn't work and you tried the integral test and the integral that you, the improper integral that you compare it to, if that diverges, then your series will diverge as well. Remember to use the integral test, you have three conditions. The function you compare it to has to be continuous, eventually positive and decreasing. So it does take a little bit of work to use the integral test. If you're lucky enough, which you won't be, but if you're lucky enough to have been handed something like one over N to some power, um, then just do the P series test, right? you know that a summation of a series or a series, I should say, diverges if it's of the form one over N to the P where P is less than or equal to one. And then talking about the stuff we just learned, the series comparison test and the limit comparison test. Well, if you use a series comparison test and you compare it to a sequence, your original sequence to a sequence that's below your original sequence. And if the summation of that sequence, new sequence diverges, then the summation of your original sequence will diverge, right? In other words, divergence below implies divergence above. If on the other hand, you want to use the limit comparison test, which is always a great test. Remember the sequences in question have to be positive just like in the series comparison test, just like in the P-series test, just like in the integral test. 
Okay. The sequences have to be positive, but when you compare their ratio, if they become finite and positive, that limit as n goes to infinity, then those series will converge or diverge together. So if the new series you're comparing with diverges, your old series diverges. That's a really good test. We'll still see it several times, so don't worry. Um, and then when we want to test for convergence, if you look at a series and you go, I know that converges, then if it's geometric, you know it'll converge actually to A over one minus R if the common ratio is less than one. If you had used the integral test, you know your series will converge if the improper integral that you're comparing to converges. Remember, to use the integral test, you have to have a positive continuous and decreasing uh, function. If you're lucky enough to have been handed a series of the form one over n to the p, you know that converges if p is greater than one. And then the series comparison test and limit comparison test. If you use a series comparison test and you compare it to a sequence, your original sequence to a sequence that's greater, and if that series of that sequence converges, then your original series will converge. Remember, convergence above implies convergence below. And finally, the limit comparison test. If you compare your sequence to a different sequence where you know that summation of that different sequence converges, and if the limit of the ratio of those two sequences tends to be finite and positive, then again, those series converge or diverge together. So if the one you're comparing to converges, then your original series converges. It sounds like a lot, but you actually do get used to it. It's just a bit of a mess, but you do get used to it.